Hi, I'm Alan Ake. I'm with Gorilla RF. We're located in Greensboro, North Carolina. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about amplifier stability, specifically small signal amplifier stability that you would have with a, a low noise amplifier or a linear driver or a gain block, something like that. With power devices, you typically don't have access to S parameter analysis of your stability. But what we're talking about is the kind of amplifiers that you can look at the S parameters, calculate mu factors, things like that, and then evaluate where you are. Um, we do applications engineering for a wide variety of customers and, and applications, and we see a lot of issues that crop up, and I just wanted to talk about those. I, again, just from a practical standpoint. One thing that you should always understand when someone has a data sheet for a linear driver or a low noise amplifier is that when they show you a stability indices and they'll say use a term like unconditionally stable what they're basically talking about is a steady state condition where the part is biased up at its nominal bias which is usually 5 volts or 3.3 volts and a particular ideal quiescent current one of the issues that customers sometimes run into though is that a device that shows unconditional stability at the nominal bias condition may actually only be conditionally stable or in worst case conditions may actually oscillate if the bias current is typically turned down. So this typically happens when the device is either turned off or turned on because it will go through a transition period from having essentially no bias current up to the full bias current level and during those transitions the S parameters are changing the mu factor that you might calculate at those conditions is changing and so a device that might be unconditionally stable at 5 volts and 70 milliamps might only be conditionally stable at 5 volts and 10 milliamps when it's first turning on so one of my pointers to you would be if you want to address the transitional stability of your device is actually hook it up to the VNA, the Vector Network Analyzer. Turn the current down on those devices that give you that control and, and just calculate the mu factors to look at the stability at say 70 milliamps, 60 milliamps, 50 milliamps, that kind of thing. It'll give you an idea of how the stability looks at all those intermediate conditions. And a practical application of this is for TDD systems, which are becoming more popular because the device is constantly being turned on and off and it's going through these transitions of being at high current to no current, but it goes through all the intermediate levels of current in between those two end states. So you can look at those because it's possible, especially if you have the device either preceded or followed by a high visoir filter, such as a saw filter, that you could develop instabilities, you could develop tones that um, are the result of transient oscillations that are occurring when the device is turned on and turned off. But by looking at the, the S parameter stability indices at those intermediate bias conditions, it can give you a clue as to whether you're going to have those types of problems. So the moral of this story is don't just think of stability in terms of steady state bias conditions. The worst case we've ever seen was for a device which was unconditionally stable, but if you powered it up with a salt filter termination on the output, it would actually lock into an oscillation and it would get stuck there. And that was merely due to the fact that in the power up sequence, it was not unconditionally stable. So in the end, that's what I was going to talk about, was just to look at the stability under all the bias conditions that the device could undergo. And um, thank you very much for your time, and that's it.